what we don't understand, while there is one aircraft on the runway, why a second aircraft should be on the same runway. The fire enveloped the entire fuselage, and so everything went up. Three hundred and seventy nine people, including three hundred and sixty seven passengers and twelve crew members, were safely evacuated. The target time is ninety seconds, and uh, they seem to have achieved that. Welcome to the show. It's good to have you with us. The year is only two days old, and Japan has already had to deal with as many tragedies. After a devastating earthquake on New Year's Day, January 2nd, saw a passenger plane collide with a small Coast Guard aircraft at Tokyo's biggest airport. Both planes burst into flames, while all 379 passengers and crew of the Japan Airlines plane managed to safely evacuate before the Airbus burned out. Only one of the six people on the Coast Guard plane survived. Dramatic scenes at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. This is the moment a passenger aircraft burst into flames after colliding with a Coast Guard plane on the runway. All 379 passengers and crew aboard the larger plane were evacuated, but those in the smaller craft were unfortunately not so lucky. The Coast Guard flight was on its way to deliver relief for those affected by the earthquake that hit the other side of the island on New Year's Day. Japan's Prime Minister offered these words for those who lost their lives. These people had carried out their jobs with a strong sense of duty and responsibility for the disaster-stricken areas and victims. This is a very unfortunate incident, and I would like to offer my sincere condolences while expressing my respect and gratitude for their sense of duty. This footage was shot by someone inside the passenger plane as it filled up with smoke. Experts say it's remarkable that everyone on the airliner managed to escape to safety. In an evacuation, ideally, you want all of the exits open, you want all of the slides to deploy normally, you want everyone to get down the slides rapidly. Uh, it appears to me that door was not used in the evacuation, so that's, e that's even more remarkable. At least 70 fire trucks were deployed to extinguish the blaze, which burned the plane down to just its fuselage. The chain of events that led to the accident are not yet known. Japanese authorities say an investigation is underway. Let's bring in Stephen Wright. He's a professor of aviation at Tampere University in Finland. Good to see you. Uh, we have seen the images. This is the stuff every traveler's nightmares are made of. How do you think all people on board the Airbus managed to escape a disaster like this? Uh, good evening. I think that this is a, a really good example of what happens when the passengers listen carefully to the crew that uh, they've been in this terrible in incident and uh, they've then uh, listened carefully to the cabin attendants that are in the aircraft, realised that something terrible is happening and then got out in that critical time. How long do people have to get off an aircraft in the event of a massive fire like the one we saw in Tokyo? Well, that's a good question. Um, the aircraft are designed to get everybody out. Uh, in fact, to make a new plane, you have to certify and show that everybody gets out in 90 seconds or less. And that also takes into account doors being unavailable. The reality is that when you start adding fire and smoke, that time increases quite significantly, almost double. Mm. But the reality is 90 seconds, if you can get out in that not first 90 seconds, your chances of survival are much greater. The passengers say they were told by air crew members not to open certain doors. How would air crew members, especially in a scenario that confusing, full of panic, I'm assuming, make the call where to get out and where not? 
Uh, it's quite straightforward, actually, because all the doors have got windows in them. And as part of the ground training for all pilots and cabin crew, you have to look through the window before you open a door for this exact reason. This isn't the first time that an evacuation has taken place and that there's been fire outside. I can reel off uh, a long list of other um, events where similar occurrences have happened. And it's important that the door stays closed when there is a fire in the immediate vicinity, because if you do open the door, the fire then penetrates the passenger cabin that much faster. It was dark on landing. And now that you talk about the windows, landing protocol is lights in the cabin dimmed and window blinds open. Why is that so important? Is it just for the crew to be able to see out or does it also involve the passengers keeping an eye out for anything that might strike them as, as strange or, or worrying? Well, you're, you're absolutely correct that the window blinds must be up legally. They've got to be up. And that's so that whoever's inside the aircraft can actually look outside uh, for this post-crash fire type scenario. And that's for both passengers and crew. And likewise, you dim the lights. So if the aircraft was incredibly bright and then you had to evacuate into the dead of night where you've got very little light, potentially this would slow this 90-second magic window down because you you know your eyes have to adjust so therefore by lowering the lights before landing and takeoff it means that if in the unlikely case that you do have to get out quickly this isn't a problem the passenger aircraft was an airbus a350 what can you tell us about that model and how it might have played a role in this not becoming a bigger tragedy because it's a fairly modern plane yeah, it's a really new plane. Um, these are the latest generation of aircraft at the moment. So they have large amounts of composites, which are modern materials. Uh, they're using less metallic material. And they're much stronger than the traditional aircraft that I certainly started my career working with. And what this means is that because the aircraft's just that little bit newer and that little bit stronger, that it has it's performed remarkably when it's struck another aircraft, yes, there's been uh, a fuel leak, yes, there has been a fire um, in the events afterwards, but the main structural rigidity of the aircraft and the wings and so on, this has actually allowed the aircraft to come to a safe stop. This has allowed all the passengers and the crew of the A350 to get out the aircraft in that, in that time period. And that's why we're so lucky that the passengers in this case um, all got out safely. That was Stephen Wright of Tampere University in Finland. Thank you so much for your assessment. Thank you. Julian Bray is an aviation expert and journalist based in Cambridge in the UK and joins us now. Mr. Bray, welcome to DW. This unfolded on the ground at one of the biggest airports in the world. How could something like this happen? Yes, you might well ask because... Uh my understanding is that possibly the small aircraft, which was a de Havilland Dash 8, was actually on the same runway as the incoming Japan Airways Airbus A350-900 uh, series. Now, the Japan Airlines uh, aircraft is a fairly new aircraft, and uh, so it would have right of way, if you like. And so we need to establish why the small aircraft was put in harm's way, or perhaps there was a breakdown in communications. Now, it has been said that the transponder on the small aircraft, the Dash 8, wasn't working. But this is pure speculation, and this will all come out in the investigation, uh, which, of course, is already uh, started. Mm -hmm. The Airbus was quickly engulfed in flames, as was the smaller plane. How do you think all the passengers on the Airbus and the crew, of course, were able to get out so quickly? This is rehearsed time and time again. And the cabin staff and the entire crew, their main priority is to keep you, a passenger, safe. And so the target time is 90 seconds to evacuate a huge aircraft. Now, they have um, inflatable chutes, which are put out from both sides. Uh, that is, if it's possible. And then you'll find that the crew will assist you to get down the chutes. Now, we've actually seen it where there have been previous incidents where people have stopped 
they started filming the cabin and sort of trying to get their luggage and everything else. So the lesson from this has to be get straight to the chute, leave everything behind, don't wait, just get off that aircraft. And once you're outside the aircraft, run away from it. Don't walk, run away from it. And hopefully that message is now uh, very firmly in everybody's thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, this Airbus hit the smaller Coast Guard plane. Both of them burst into flames. The Airbus, of course, a huge, a massive aircraft. Five people died on that Coast Guard plane, but one person made it out alive. How is that possible, given the intensity of the crash? Again, this is speculation, but uh, we understand it might be the pilot that, uh, that managed to get out. It really depends what they're carrying. I understand the Dash 8 was actually full of emergency equipment destined for the, the earthquake zone. So it might have been quite a full load, and that might have hampered the escape routes for the people sitting in the back with it. We just don't know this, and this will come out in the investigation. But very clearly, that small aircraft, which belonged to the Coast Guard service, should not have been on that runway. And that is the main thrust of the investigation at the moment to find out why it was there. Now, it's quite interesting because you see pictures of the A350 uh, and it's completely alight all the way along the fuselage, the hull if you like, but with modern materials, the inside, which is pressurized, they managed to keep the flame out of uh, the inside so the passengers were safe. They managed to get all the passengers off all the crew off, everybody evacuated, and so 379 people, so it's a very full aircraft, uh, their lives were saved. Mm -hmm. So thank you uh, to the crew because you did a wonderful job there. How much of a role did it play that this is one of the most modern large passenger planes, that this did not turn into a bigger tragedy? I think you've hit the nail on the head because it's uh, built of modern carbon fiber materials and it's got a great de degree of insulation. Uh, it's light because they use lighter materials these days, but the point was that uh, on impact you saw it was on fire as it came in, and uh, but even so the passengers inside were still safe. It's only when you break through that barrier and the fire comes inside then you have a big problem. But they managed to get the slides out, get the doors open, and get everybody off that aircraft. And that is the whole point. You'll find that uh, when these things happen, the emergency lights come on, there's an emergency procedure, and thankfully, everybody actually followed it. We are actually seeing the video now as it came in, and that aircraft was well and truly alight. But the point was the flames were on the outside, not on the inside. And so when it finally came to a halt, they were able to get these chutes inflated and out. It happens very quickly, and they literally manhandle you out onto the slide and away. They will probably have a member of staff uh, at, the, at the foot of the chute because some people will be injured as they go down because it's quite a rough process, but the point is it's to save lives. So um, you have to give a little, you might say. As aviation expert and journalist Julian Bray, thank you so much. Thank you.